In this video we're going to look at a couple of ways of capturing a simulation for activities performed on a mobile device. Now SAP Enable Now Recorder only works on a Windows machine so we have to use a couple of tricks to get to do that. So I'm going to show you a couple of ways today. First I'm going to do it using the desktop machine and secondly I'm going to do it using the mobile device. So I'm going to do this for the same application in both of those methods and this is going to be for creating a purchase order in SAP S4. So I'm going to start by creating a simulation. Now before I start recording I'm going to get the application set up the way I want it so it looks like it's on a mobile device. As I said, I'm going to be recording my S4 system for managed purchase orders. This is the standard browser interface for S4. And I want this to look like it's on a mobile device. Handily, Chrome and Edge, which is based on Chromium, allows you to do that. If you go to the developer tools, which is usually F12, or you can go to more tools, developer tools here, and you get to something that looks like this, up on the top, right on the left hand side of this there's a little icon here that lets you toggle between it looking like it's on your desktop machine and how it would look on a mobile device and that's very handy if I click on that now it shows me what it would look like on a mobile device and I can resize this to be the size of my mobile device screen I've already done that in this case that's a close approximation and that's what I'm going to record against I'm just going to record against this this is great if you don't have an emulator that can emulate your mobile device and it's an application that runs through the browser as S4 does. So I'm going to record against that. So that's set up more or less the way I want it. And I can see in here exactly what those dimensions are. Say I really want it to be an exact 380 by 800. Let's say we go with that. Now one thing to watch out for is when you record in Enable Now, it's going to shrink the browser window so it's got space to put the toolbar across the top, the recording bar. So what you need to do is make sure that this window here is not full screen and it's not going into that area where it's going to want to put that recording toolbar, which is, I think, 28 pixels or something like that. So I'm going to drop this down to windowed and I'm going to move it somewhere off there. I just need to make sure that the top of this is cleared of where the recording bar will be. And then obviously I need to make the bottom a little bit bigger here. Let's see how big I can get this. Let's see about here. That's close enough because I just want to get to the bottom of there. So that's going to work for me now. So this is now set up the way I want to record it. So back in Enable Now, I can click Record. I can choose that application. Now, a couple of things here. On the profile, I've tried a few of the different profiles. It doesn't really seem to make much of a difference. I tried using UI5 because it really is UI5, but that didn't really help me much. Web V2 didn't help much. So I'm just going to leave it as generic web application. And I'm going to click continue. And here is a couple of other things you need to watch out for. By default, in my settings at least, I've got region, which I want, but I've also got fit application window here, which I don't want. So I'm going to deselect that because I want my recording area to be something different. I need to move my application back to where I had it before it handily resized it for me. And this box here, I need to make sure this is exactly around the area that I want to record. So around about there, drag all of those boundaries in. Actually, I think it needs to be about there. So let me drag that in here. And that's going to be about there. And that one's close as well, so about here. Okay, that's good enough. That's close. That's the exact area it's going to re record. Get it as close as you can. Uh, make sure fit application window is not selected, region is selected, and then get it as close to however you want it as you can. Actually, I'm going to have to move this down a bit to make sure I'm not in my recorder toolbar area. So we were about there. Okay, let's go with that. That looks good. So now I click record. And as always, it's going to gray out the bits it's not recording, which leaves me with just what is effectively my mobile device window running here. And now I can perform the activities that I need to. You may find that you need to adjust the browser window here to get to exactly where you want to start recording from. But let's assume that I'm now at that place and I want to create my new purchase order. So here I just perform the actions in the system. This is my cursor here. 
and this is as if I was pressing it with my finger. That's why the, the cursor looks a little different here. So I'm going to click on the ellipsis here, create. I'm just going to perform a few simple steps and then we'll see what that gives us in our recording. So here I'm going to go to supplier, select that supplier, scroll down to the item section, add a new item to the purchase order. Don't worry if you're not familiar with S4 or on a mobile device, it's just the, the mechanics that we care about here. Clicking on things on the screen, typing in text. So I'll click create here. I'm going to search for my item. Select that. And that's as far as I'm going to go here. I just want to capture a few steps to show you how that works. So let's assume I'm finished here. I'm going to close my, or I'm going to stop recording and we'll see what that's created for us. So back in SAP Enable now in Producer, if I scroll up to the top, I'll see that it's recorded what I did. As with any other recording, I've got a step per action that has a screenshot in it and then the action that I performed. And I can see that it's captured the screen correctly and it's captured the action area that I used as well. And here it's captured the image, but one thing I've noticed, regardless of which recording profile I use, this method doesn't actually seem to capture the object name. So I have to type that in myself, but um, in general, it's captured where I performed an action. It's given me a bubble on here and I can go through here. I clicked on that, I clicked create. Again, it's got the image, but not the object name. After clicking create, I went here to the supplier field and I typed in a supplier name. It captured that I did that, more or less. It's captured a bunch more than I actually did type in for some reason, but I can tidy that up myself. And it says clear the field as opposed to typing stuff in. And again, I don't have the object name. So it's far from perfect, but it has created a usable recording for us. So this is one way if you've got a, you want to record an activity on a mobile device and that happens to be browser based, you can use this method. And it's, it's acceptable, it works, it gives us something usable here. And as far as your trainees are concerned, you're showing them, hey, this is how it works on a mobile device and they can become familiar with that, which is the whole point of the simulations. So I'll save that one here and then we'll go on to our second method. And this one's even less useful, but in some cases it's the only way we can do this. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to create another recording for this. Now in this case, I've actually gone onto my mobile device and performed the activities on that device. But what I did was I effectively just took screenshots as I went through the actions on that device. And I've captured all of those and I've brought them onto my PC. And if you look at those, I've basically got these screenshots here of doing exactly the same thing, but on the mobile app. So I go into here, I click the ellipsis, I click create, etc., all the way through here. So I have a succession of screenshots and I'm just gonna leave those here for now. I'm gonna go back to enable now. And from here, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go to the tools menu, select import and then import images. That's going to ask me to choose which images I want to bring in. Now, it's important that you get these in the correct order because it's going to create steps in this order. Handily, the order by default is on the file name and the file name includes a timestamp down to the nearest second. So they all are all in the correct order already. So I'm just going to select those, select the first one, shift click to select the last one, click open. And now it's going to give me a couple of options. And this is where it's important to get these right. First of all, the width and height, I'm going to bring them in as 800 by 600, so they match the other one that we did. These recordings were actually captured on my mobile device at 1440 by 3200, so a very high resolution. It's going to scale them down, so I want to have resample images selected. That's going to make sure that they're as sharp as they can be, even though they're being downsized from 1440 by 3200 down to 800 by 600, they'll still be clear. So I have that selected in here. The next thing I want to worry about is import as screen macro, because I want each step to be its own step with its own screen in it. 
otherwise it will put all of those images in the same step, which is not what we want. Display duration is the typical display duration property that's used in demo mode, how long it's going to show this screen for. That's great if you just want a pure demo of the actions being performed. You don't really want it to work as a simulation. The last thing I'm going to use is insert mouse action because I want this to be a workable simulation that people can watch in demo mode or they can try in practice mode because I want my learners to still get the look and feel of the mobile application even though they're really sat in front of their PC. So I'm going to select insert mouse action. So with these settings here, I click OK and that will go and bring all of those images in for me. And you can see it's doing that down the right hand, the left hand side already. And it brings in all of those. Once it's done, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna start from the top again and see what we had in here. Now, the problem with this is because this was screenshots, it doesn't really know where I clicked or what I did. So I've got no information in there at all. I have to enter everything myself. So I've got my step names that have got nothing but the file name in them. And then all of my mouse actions, because I told it I wanted it to insert mouse actions, it's basically just got a inserted by script here. It's a left click action and it gives me an action area, but that's all I've got. If I zoom in a bit here so I can see it a bit better, I've got my action area and I've got a bubble for it. And what I want to do or what I have to do is I basically have to drag that to where I want it to be. So here I clicked on the ellipsis. So I'm going to drag that down to here. And I've got my bubble, which I'll just position manually for here. I don't normally do this, but I'll just position it manually. I mean, again, there's no text at all. It's put inserted by script as the object name, but here it's going to be the more button and I would need to put all of the text I want in here myself. So, so it doesn't really give me anything automatically at all, but at least I do have something I can work from and all of my screenshots are a consistent size. The other thing I was going to mention is be careful with your playback settings. Here I want this to work as a regular simulation. I don't care personally if the bubble goes over the outside of the image. Normally for my full screen desktop simulations, yes, you'd want the bubble to be within that image. This I'm, I'm going to leave here because it's taller than it is wide. So even if you have zoom to fit set, it's going to fit that height. The width is going to be okay and there's going to be space for it to fit that around the side during playback. So as I say, everything all the way through here, I'm going to have to go to all of these and manually move that action area if I can get hold of it, to wherever it's supposed to be. So I'm going to have to move the action area. I may need to move the bubble as well to wherever it's convenient to have that. And then the last thing is that I want to have all of the text that I want in myself. So that's the other method here. Um, one final caveat with that, it does work reasonably well. It does allow you to build a simulation of what looks like you doing things on a mobile device, although it's just screenshots again which is all enable now captures itself. There are some applications that will not let you capture screenshots. Some of the more secure messaging applications. I know field glass will stop you from capturing screenshots. So depending on the application, you may not actually be able to create screenshots and use this method anyway. But if you can, it's a good option to use. So there you have it. Which one of those you use is entirely up to you or is dictated by whether you have a mobile application that can also run through the browser, but these are the options. Thanks for watching. Hope you found that useful. If you did, please subscribe to the channel. Thank you.